Cô sẽ bật cái đèn đi cho cái sáng đó thằng em mời chắc là giờ nó nè thôi đó cho nó tới nè Vũ mà bình đi làm chi đoàn hoàn lại cho kia Kiến này Vũ mà bình đi làm chi đoàn hoàn lại chưa chị nó thấy rồi nó thấy chưa nó đang rồi chưa chưa chị đợi cho máy xong thì xuống vậy đâu à máy xong rồi hồi nãy chị đi em nhé à ừ cái gì mà mình xịt xong ăn tôi cái thằng nó chị đâu tôi 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 chưa đẹp đâu tôi chị tôi chưa đẹp đâu Thôi không cần bê nhớ chị kia Cái chị nào bê nói chị thì sang cái xí nữa làm mẫu Dạ uống vô đi chị Uống đi chị Không, à, không uống đi Đắp đồ sang xuống hết cái đồ uống là vừa sáng ở nhà đúng không? sáng ta cũng có thấy. đang kiếm có không? nó chỉ nhiều không? máy sợi.
nhân mà lo chứ cô này sao có thấy anh là bà bá thịt long nó ra sao có vô em vô tay lại Kiến ơi chị chị đang nói cho ngay này kiến này à, Kiến đang nhỏ một cái mà đó thôi làm đi để bên nó có hiền xong, 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 xong Bên nó này Chị thôi mà chị đổ kìa nữa kìa Thế cũng nhanh thôi thôi Em hết nó không ra chị mất nó ra được thôi đây Cửa hai nó sẽ tẩy được em làm được làm được làm được tiệm cũng đông chị à. em thì tiệm em khách đông nhưng mà tiền em nó ít tiệm họ khách ít nhưng mà tiền họ lấy nhiều khách dục đấy chị khách dục thịt của em khách dục thịt của em đó không nạ mà để không nạ đó nha để thì nó lấy nhiều một mà có nhiều người XM is a hybrid super SUV with 644 HP and a crazy design. BMW has revealed the new 2023 XM, a performance SUV with a plug-in hybrid powertrain.
It features a twin-turbo V8 and an electric motor that combine to produce 644 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. The XM starts at $159,995 and will go on sale in the U.S. in the first quarter of 2023. BMW M is best known for sports sedans like the M3 and M5. But the performance division is going in many new directions as of late, and the new 2023 XM combines many of these fresh elements in a single vehicle, fitting, as this is meant to be M's new flagship. As an SUV that's available exclusively as an M, the XM also introduces a new plug-in hybrid powertrain that's the first hybrid ever to wear the M badge. The concept version of the XM proved controversial when it made its debut last year, and now we have all the details on the production version that's slated to go on sale in the US in the first quarter of 2023. The XM's powertrain consists of a twin-turbo 4.4-liter V8 combined with an electric motor integrated into the 8-speed automatic transmission. There's also a 25.7-kilowatt-hour battery pack that enables an estimated electric driving range of 30 miles. Total output sits at 644 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque, and there will be an even more powerful label red version coming later on with a claimed 735 horsepower and 735 pound-feet. This makes the XM the most powerful current production BMW, and it'll need all that grunt to move around its 6,062 pound mass. Were it not an M exclusive, the XM might otherwise wear the X8 designation. It's considerably larger than both the X5 and X6, but smaller than the three-row X7, much like the relationship between Audi's Q7 and Q8 SUVs. The XM is a two-row model with five seats, and its interior features many of the wilder design elements seen on the concept version. A two-tone blue and brown leather color scheme is available, and the brown, vintage, leather is meant to look aged. There's also an interesting pattern in the headliner that's accompanied by LED lighting elements that pulse when you receive a phone call or try to open the door when an object is sensed outside. The exterior design is more angular and imposing than many of BMW's other SUVs. The large kidney grills up front are flanked by split headlights like those on the latest X7. A strong, accented character line rises along the side and kicks up at the rear doors as a nod to the classic BMW Hofmeister kink. There are BMW logos engraved into each upper corner of the rear window, and the aggressive-looking taillights wrap around the sides. Quad exhaust tips and diffuser elements give the rear bumper a racy look. 23-inch wheels are standard, but 22-inchers are optional, and BMW says the smaller size saves weight. Adaptive dampers are standard equipment, as is an electronically controlled limited slip rear differential and a rear biased all wheel drive system. 48 volt active anti roll bars are a feature new to BMW M, although the XM uses traditional steel springs rather than an air suspension. Our initial drive of a prototype XM earlier this year revealed a surprisingly engaging driving experience, largely thanks to the steering tuning, so we look forward to sampling the final version to see if the spry handling is preserved. The XM will compete with other Hyper SUVs such as the Audi RS Q8 and Mercedes AMG GLE 63, and is even aiming for higher targets including the Aston Martin DBX and Lamborghini Urus. It will start at $159,995, but options should add a considerable sum to that total, and the more powerful label red model will carry a sticker price of over $185,000. Like it or not, this super SUV now represents the pinnacle of the M lineup, and it'll start arriving at US dealerships early next year. 2023 Fisker Ocean has started production, with plans to build 42,000 next year. Initial 2023 Fisker Ocean production commenced today at their carbon neutral plant in Graz, Austria, with most deliveries slated for next year as production gradually ramps from 300 in Q1 of 2023 to 800 in Q2 to more than 42,000 expected by year's end. 
All first edition Ocean 1 units are spoken for, as are 2023 examples of the affordable FWD Sport and AWD Ultra, but orders are still being taken for the top-level AWD Ocean Extreme, which goes for $68,999, plus a yet-to-be-announced destination charge. Fisker says the top-level model will offer 350 miles of range according to EPA methodology, and can accelerate to 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds thanks to the 550 horsepower available from its dual-motor AWD platform. Official production began today for Henrik Fisker's long-awaited Ocean all-electric five-passenger SUV, which had an uncertain gestation until a tie-in with assembly partner Magna International was announced in October 2020. Fisker's previous automobile, the Fisker Karma Plug-in Hybrid, is not affiliated with the Fisker Ocean project, the tooling having been sold off and reconstituted by Karma Automotive as Henrik Fisker himself moved on to focus on his all-electric Ocean SUV project. Expectations are high that the Ocean will make a good first impression when customer deliveries begin. After all, the Magna Stair plant in Graz, Austria, also produces the Mercedes-Benz G-Class, the BMW 5 Series, and the Jaguar E-Pace and I-Pace, as well as the BMW Z4 and Toyota Supra. As expected from an established assembly plant, they seem to be on the right track to manage build quality and early teething problems, with a gradual production ramp-up that will result in just 300 examples produced by the end of first quarter of 2023. And it's not as though the Ocean's assembly lines switch just got flipped today, as some 95 prototype Ocean vehicles were built as the line came together. Production will increase to 8,000 by the end of next year's second quarter and rise to more than 42,000 by year's end. Compared with the unrelated Volkswagen ID.4, the Ocean SUV is some 5 inches wider and nearly 8 inches longer, both in wheelbase and in an overall sense, but it stands no taller. That gives it a sleek shape that, crucially, also provides increased underfloor space for a larger battery. The capacity of that battery has not yet been announced, but Fisker does report that all-wheel drive vehicles equipped with the larger Hyper Range battery will be good for up to 350 miles according to EPA testing methodology, thanks in part to a rear motor disconnect that comes into play while cruising. At the other extreme, Fisker says that boost mode will unleash as much as 550 horsepower that can accelerate the machine to 60 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds. Details and Specs 2023 Fisker Ocean Prototype 2023 Fisker Ocean The front-wheel drive sport, which is currently sold out for 2023 thanks to its low starting price of $37,499 before destination, will use the smaller touring range pack and deliver 250 miles of range. Its single-motor powertrain makes 275 horsepower and takes the entry-level ocean to 60 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds. Few interior dimensions have been released apart from headroom, but at 41.1 inches in front and 40.4 inches out back, things do look promising for the relatively low-slung electric crossover, which offers a panoramic glass roof across the board. The tinted glass panels are fixed on the entry-level sport, sliding on the mid-level ultra, and supplemented with photovoltaic panels on the extreme and the first edition one. With luck, we will be able to evaluate and test an early production model in the first part of 2023. The ocean has been a long time coming, but Henrik Fisker's tie-up with an established auto assembly outfit appears to be on the cusp of paying off in a very tangible way. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor Our first test, absolutely bonkerballs. In the super truck horsepower war, there's no Han vs. Griot-style argument to be had, the Ram 1500 TRX shot first. Sure, Ford's F-150 Raptor pickup has been on the hunt for more than a decade, but history has it down as the balanced desert runner, its power level, 450 horses today, more or less in equilibrium with its dirt-dashing chops. 
In contrast, the TRX roared onto the scene two years ago as a ballsy, 702 horsepower beast with a bad attitude and a mission to rooster tail sand in the face of Ford's wimpy off road pickup. No more. The 2023 Ford Raptor R is here to fight back with 700 horsepower of its own, and it has its blaster set to kill. Once we took the new Raptor R to the test track, we discovered its aim is pretty damn true. It trips up the TRX in the 0 to 60 miles per hour sprint, clocking an astounding 3.7 second time, thumping our best existing result in the RAM by a significant 0.4 second. No doubt aided by the 6,000 pound Ford weighing an incredible 700 fewer pounds than the Ram. And it feels every bit that quick, charging off the line like a rhino with an ICBM up its rear on the way to a 12.1 second quarter mile run at 111.8 miles per hour. The TRX's best? 12.7 seconds at 107.3 miles per hour. For further reference, the last non-R Raptor we tested with the 450 horsepower twin-turbo V6 and 37-inch tires checks in at 5.6 seconds to 60 and 14.3 at 94.0 miles per hour through the quarter. Credit the R's absolute brute of an engine, a version of the 5.2-liter supercharged V8 found in the Mustang Shelby GT500, which is appropriately dubbed Predator. Tuned to have a meatier, more truck-friendly torque curve thanks to software tweaks and a smaller supercharger pulley, it delivers its fusillade of power and torque on a whim even on the move, the 10-speed automatic adroitly shuffling between its abundance of ratios. This is a truck that can spin all four of its big blocked off-road tires on pavement as easily as you can turn up the AC. The exhaust has four adjustable sound levels that range from basically quiet. Your neighbors will love you for widening the time window in which this operates at startup, done via the touch screen, to oh my god I think I just summoned Cthulhu. Really, though, in any of the three angriest settings the noise is ragged and deep and glorious and delivered with far less supercharger wine than in the TRX. The Raptor R is blown, but it doesn't really want you to know it's blowing. Also unlike the Ram TRX, there's a two-wheel drive mode for even more goofball shenanigans, if you dare. 2WD could be called the squirreliest setting, OBS, albeit if the squirrel in question could power lift 2,000 pounds and had done time for attempted homicide. We kid, mostly, the Raptor R's chassis is so dialed in and offers enough fidelity that corralling this beast when the rear steps out is easier than you might think. Still, maybe keep it in 4A unless you have plenty of room for error. Should you think Ford Performance just stuck a big ol' motor in the Raptor and four-wheel peeled into the sunset, don't. The R is a holistically tuned machine that delivers fantastic ride quality on the road without getting floaty, while at the same time serving up outstanding rebound performance and body control when humping over the gnarliest stuff you can find. This is a Raptor through and through and it feels like the excellent chassis was waiting for this engine. If there's a weak spot in how the 2023 Ford Raptor R drives, it's that the steering is just vague enough, and the steering wheel thick and large enough in diameter that the truck rarely feels like putty in your hands. You never, ever forget its size, whether that's maintaining a lane on the highway or dodging rocks and trees on forest paths. This isn't the case with the Ram TRX which is actually an inch wider and a skosh longer but somehow manages to drive smaller. Outside of the V8, the rest of the package is familiar from the Raptor 37, a sort of Raptor or light introduced for 2021 as something of a stopgap while Ford readied the 2023 Raptor R's engine. The R and 37 share their larger tires, body add-ons, and pretty much everything else outside of the engine bay. So, the Raptor R has comfy, well-bolstered seats, a relatively high-quality but extremely busy interior, an infotainment system that gets the job done, with some annoying quirks, such as requiring you to spin the tuning knob to get to the direct input for satellite radio stations, and all the various cubbies, bins, and features, the power folding shifter, flip-out console lid table, and rear under-seat storage. For example, that make non-raptorized F-150s so practical. Downsides? 
the turning circle is big enough to fit a football field, you might crush a small sedan while parking it, and the 8 pattern in the bedside graphics is corny. Find the 1V and win a prize. Well, all that and the fact it costs $109,145 to start, enough to buy a regular Raptor and any number of sporty cars to go with it. Heck, it's enough to buy a base TRX and a Ford Maverick. But in a fight, and make no mistake, Ford and Ram are in a pitched battle, often it's not who shoots first who wins, it's who shoots last. With the 2023 Ford Raptor R, the Blue Oval just may have landed a crippling blow. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. For Wheeler's Pickup Truck and SUV of the Year 2023, Day 3, More Dirt Testing. Working at an off road magazine like Four Wheeler has its benefits. One we look forward to each and every year is the new 4x4 vehicle testing we do to determine our four wheeler of the year winner. As you may know, our testing of new four wheel drive vehicles for 2023 started with a track day and continued with our first day of testing in the dirt. This trip allows us, a passel of off road experts and enthusiasts, to spend some time with new production vehicles that come with four wheel drive with a low range transfer case. The aim of the SUV of the year and pickup of the year tests is to allow us to push the limits of these vehicles, within reason, so we can pass on our knowledge and experience to our readers. Let's face it, folks, no one is going to take their brand new $80,000 to $107,000 4x4 rock crawling or mud bogging, so our aim is to drive these vehicles to the extent that we can judge their overall capability and give our expert feedback on what we see in the fleet. This year we have seven vehicles total, including two pickup trucks and five SUVs. The trucks are the Ram Heavy Duty Rebel with a worn winch and a rear locker, and the Chevy Silverado 1500 ZR2 that has two lockers, active suspension, and a 6.2-liter V8. Our SUV field included the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk 4 say which features plug-in hybrid technology along with a low-range transfer case with a locking center differential and a traction-controlled rear diff that can approach locked, the Jeep Wagoneer with the new inline-six engine and similar traction capabilities to the Grand Cherokee Trailhawk Force, the Lexus LX600 F Sport, which is reportedly based on the current Toyota Land Cruiser that's only available overseas as a Toyota LC, the Toyota Sequoia TRD Pro which is based on the new Tundra platform and shares its hybrid 3.6-liter engine, transmission, and a similar rear axle, with a selectable locker, and, last but not least, the Chevy Tahoe Z71, which also has a 6.2-liter V8, active suspension, skid plates, and red-painted tow hooks. For day 3 of our OTY testing we headed towards the vast off-road expanse known collectively as Johnson Valley. California. Yeah, this is the home of the Daunting Hammers trails, but we wouldn't be hitting any of those. Instead, we traveled via dirt to the area and continued on what we would consider mild off-road trails throughout the day. This gave us ample opportunity to test how the vehicles do on graded roads and rutted but mild desert trails that are sandy, rocky, eroded dirt, and more. This day is more about getting off-road miles under the belts of the vehicle testers and getting a feel for what a new owner might do with their new SUV or pickup. It's a great time to see how the suspension rides and works, possibly get the vehicles flexed out a little, and see how they all drive on a variety of terrains. So far, all of the vehicular contestants have done better than expected. We can't tell you who will win yet, that news will come when all our comments have been collected and scoring has been completed, but for now, here are our observations about the SUVs and pickups the manufacturers supplied to us for this year's test. First, as has been noted, the Lexus LX600 F Sport is incredibly capable off-road. Its traction control is about as dialed as any we have met, but it's hampered by its vast front grille and fascia which seem to hang perilously close to the ground. Also, its ridiculous low-profile tires and huge wheels are a liability on even the mildest trails or dirt roads, as even a fist-sized rock could kill a tire and bend a rim with ease. The Grand Cherokee seems small in this group, but it's comfortable on and off-road. 
it doesn't seem to be quite as capable as other Grand Cherokee Trailhawks we have tested in the past, but it does just about everything you'd want it to, and the hybrid drivetrain is more than powerful enough. The Toyota Sequoia, again with plenty of power, is fun on dirt roads and has ample traction when the going gets tough. Its design is very blocky, with a face that takes some getting used to, and it seems to lack any front toe points, which will hurt it on our test. The Chevy Tahoe Z71 does everything you'd expect and more despite frequently lifting tires when the terrain gets it all uneven. It has a very low belly just ahead of the rear axle that can and will come in contact with the ground. The Jeep Wagoneer is fun to drive and seems more capable than it has any right to be. It may in fact be more capable off-road than the Grand Cherokee that shares its stable. Many complemented its larger sidewalls relative to the other SUVs on the trip, thanks to relatively smaller wheels and a decently sized tire. Getting back to the pickups, the Chevy Silverado ZR2 is a blast to drive off-road and, for us, performed exceptionally well when it came time to push the limits of its off-road traction. Two locking differentials and flexi suspension combined with what are probably the most aggressive tires on the test meant this thing was almost certainly the most capable vehicle in attendance. It even climbed a few obstacles we didn't expect it to. The Ram Rebel 2500 is very capable for a true workhorse of a three-quarters ton truck, but it's still a three-quarters ton truck in the end. It's not quite as flexible and lacks the front locking differential of the power wagon but it does have a higher payload and towing capacity as a result. That's a compromise away from the dirt and toward everyday use for a big truck like this. It also has overly large wheels, perhaps for load rating, and shallow sidewalls, which hurt it off-road, as any rough terrain is decidedly jarring despite any attempts made by the suspension to mitigate. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. Silo in a range EV tire test, rolling in a Model 3 on Siloan's new EV tire. EV drivers, have you noticed there are more people using public charging stations? And sometimes you have to wait to use a DC fast charger? It seems more and more EVs are hitting the road. So in an effort to cater to the ever-increasing number of EV drivers who need new tires when they finally wear out, Tire maker Siloan has developed its first EV specific tire, the Arrange EV. Siloan invited us to a test drive in Southern California to sample its Arrange EV tires on a Tesla Model 3. We started in Beverly Hills and headed toward Highway 101 through Mulholland Drive. On this winding residential road perched on a hill, the Tesla Model 3 equipped with Arrange EV tires had no problem navigating the road's dips, dumps, and occasional unavoidable potholes in a graceful manner. The ride was slightly on the firm side, but that's to be expected from a sporty sedan. Soon we were on the freeway to drive to Calabasas and Malibu. Unlike internal combustion engine powertrains, EV powertrains offer an inherently quieter ride. But conversely, any excessive road and tire noise are more pronounced at high speed without engine noise masking the sound. On the highway, we noticed the Arrange EV tires didn't introduce any excessive tire noise and kept the cabin as quiet, if not quieter, than a Model 3 on its original tires. Next, we peeled off the highway and drove to Malibu through some twisty roads facing a beautiful view of the coast. Make no mistake, the Arrange EV tires are not high-performance summer tires. But on a long downhill stretch with many tight turns, they behaved very well and offered predictable feedback and handling. They're a good set of all-around, pun intended, all-season tires designed to handle various road conditions. After our test drive, our initial thought was the Arrange EV tire performed in the real world just as well as a Tesla Model 3 on its original tires. Siloan told us it provides all that at a lower cost and that its tires are more efficient. Siloan uses what it calls EcoPoint 3 technology, in which the rubber compounding materials are mixed uniformly under continuous liquid phase conditions. The goal is to produce a tire that retains good traction under various wet and dry conditions while still maintaining a low rolling resistance to further EV range. Another tech feature worth pointing out is the use of Siloan's silent tread to help reduce tire noise and cost. 
As mentioned earlier, road and tire noise can be more pronounced in an EV, so some other EV-specific tires on the market have acoustic foam inside for noise reduction. We asked Siloan whether the Arrange EV tire has the same kind of foam. It told us it tested both with and without foam, and the foam made no noticeable improvement in noise reduction. Also, the addition of foam means the tire is unable to be patched or repaired. Siloan's silent tread sequential pitch tread design allowed the company to ditch the acoustic foam while maintaining excellent quiet performance, it helps reduce manufacturing costs, too. Siloan is certainly stepping into the EV tire market with a compelling product. Siloan claims the Arrange EV tire can deliver 7% more range on a Tesla Model 3 than other EV-specific tires on the market, and that may just be enough for you to skip a crowded charging site one day. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Honda Accord vs Toyota Camry, mid-size juggernauts compared on paper. Honda and Toyota have done battle for decades now. Even though the CRV and RAV4 compact SUVs are manning both brands' front lines in the sales wars these days, the rivalry between the midsize four door Accord and venerable Camry is still going strong. Both companies introduced major redesigns for 2018, but while Toyota is still busy tweaking versions of the Camry it debuted five years ago, Honda has an all new 11th generation Accord for 2023. We haven't had the chance to drive them back to back yet, don't worry, that comparison is on the way, so here's how they stack up on paper. Size and interiors Size is the best reason to consider a midsize Accord or Camry over their more affordable, smaller Civic and Corolla siblings, but which one actually offers more space? The Honda is marginally bigger in every dimension. Although the vehicle's wheelbases are almost identical, the Accord is a few inches longer overall, plus nearly an inch wider. Those extra inches will likely make it slightly harder to maneuver in tight spaces. That said, the Accord's additional breadth pays off in passenger and cargo volume. Folks riding in the back have 2.8 inches of additional legroom compared to the Toyota, plus the Accord has 11% more trunk space. Sitting in the two back-to-back, -back, the Accord's front seats are more comfortable and its armrests offer additional padding. Climate controls and air vent adjusters feel more premium, too, with the same tactile greatness as the pieces in the latest Civic, CRV, and HRV models. While the Accord feels as if it has an extra inch of legroom in the rear, the Camry's back seat is better suited to taller passengers thanks to a slight headroom advantage, power and fuel economy. Yes, the Camry is still using the same base engine it had in 2018, but so is the Accord. Toyota fits its midsize sedan with a naturally aspirated 2.5-liter i4 and Honda equips the Accord with a turbocharged 1.5-liter i4. The Honda is less powerful but more torquey than the Toyota, plus we anticipate it'll be slightly more efficient in the city. Only the Camry is available with AWD while the Accord remains front-wheel drive only. In a major switch, the Camry could be the better choice for power-hungry enthusiasts. As part of the 2023 update, Honda no longer offers the Accord with its gutsy turbo 2.0-liter i4 option. If you want a gas engine, the 1.5T is your only choice. Toyota still sells a few Camry variants with its 3.5-liter V6 which delivers 301 horsepower and 267 lbft of torque, including the convincingly sporty TRD model. Plus, the non-hybrid Toyotas use conventional torque converter automatic transmissions, while every Accord power plant is paired with a continuously variable automatic transmission, CVT, though it is about as good as this type of transmission can be. Accord Hybrid vs. Camry Hybrid Honda paid more attention to the Accord Hybrid with the 2023 redesign, estimating it will account for around 50% of sales. The new version gets Honda's dual-motor hybrid system producing 204 horsepower and 247 lbft. Toyota's Camry Hybrid optimizes a single motor and delivers 208 horsepower. We don't have performance numbers for the Accord yet 
but the previous generation model was significantly quicker than an equivalent Camry. But let's be honest, hybrid buyers are more interested in fuel economy. The 2023 Accord Hybrid hasn't yet been evaluated by the EPA. The 2022 model returned an impressive 44-48-41-47 MPG City slash highway and we expect similar numbers from its successor. The Camry Hybrid is rated at a shocking 44-51-47-53 MPG. Technology This pairing is pretty even on the tech front looking at entry-level trims, but splurging on a higher-end model exposes a huge difference. In the cases of the Camry LE, SE, and TRD as well as the Accord LX and EX, the automakers fit their sedans with 7.0-inch touchscreen infotainment systems. In both cases, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. The Camry XLE and XSE upgrade to a 9.0-inch touchscreen, and buyers who opt for the V6 in each higher trim benefit from a 9-speaker JBL premium audio system. Sounds good, until you look at the newer Accord. All variants but the LX and EX work with a 12.3-inch system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In the case of the top-spec Accord Touring, Honda also fits a 12-speaker Bose Premium Sound plus Google integration for voice recognition and navigation. The Touring includes a head-up display, which isn't offered on any Camry, and a digital instrument cluster is standard on all trims. We've also found the Accord system especially crisp and responsive. Safety Good news, both of these are exceptionally safe midsize sedans. The Camry achieves a 5-star overall safety rating from the NHTSA and a 2022 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Although the Accord hasn't been evaluated, Honda developed the new generation targeting those same accolades. For what it's worth, though, the Camry scores poor in the IIHS updated side test that will join the top safety pick requirements for 2023, and Honda says the Accord will ace it. Both automakers include their collections of driver assist features as standard. Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus is included on all models, which means every Camry has automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, automatic high beams, and road sign assist. Blind spot monitoring and rear cross-traffic alert are included at higher trims. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Honda Civic Type R, a brush with greatness Honda's history is deeply rooted in internal combustion engines, and as we make the shift toward electrification, the company's most exciting gasoline-only vehicle has just undergone what is likely to be its final redesign. The Honda Civic Type R has rejoined the lineup for 2023, following the 2022 model year revamp of the supporting Civic sedan and hatchback. Based on the handful of laps we took around Harris Hill Raceway outside Austin, Texas, including as a passenger to two-time Formula One champion Max Verstappen, it seems Honda absolutely nailed it. For starters, we fist-bumped Max as we pulled the bright red seatbelt across our chest. Full send, right? We asked. A shrug from Max and a you sure, served as acknowledgement as he revved the 315 horsepower Turbo 4, slipped the clutch, and spun the front Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, launching us out of the pits. The deep baritone from the engine and exhaust sounded great from under a helmet, and he ran out the engine until it coughed at the red line. In Verstappen's hands, the Type R rarely tracked in a straight line as he kept the engine on full boil, stringing the turns together in a sinuous uninterrupted dance of slip angles and oversteer. He braked as lightly and as seldom as possible, allowing the tire's lateral loads to scrub off speed, along with a healthy amount of tread, we're sure. Max was well past the Type R's performance envelope as he one-handed the steering wheel with the kind of nonchalance we'd adopt rolling up to the drive through window. We're running the course in the counterclockwise direction. Thanks to a significant bump in turn 6, Max launches a few tires off the pavement. The Cup 2s will be optional, with Sport 4S rubber standard, but the Type R stays on target with only a slight steering adjustment from our somewhat bored driver. 
he said it's better to go full throttle rather than lift off it over that bump and the ensuing ruts leading toward turn 5. When an F1 champion gives you driving advice, you're wise to take it. After only two laps, the fun was over as Max coasted into the pits. It was a brief encounter, yet the afterglow remains days later. Then it was our turn behind the wheel. Sadly, we weren't allowed on the track unsupervised. Instead, we were required to follow behind a pro driver, one who drove with significantly less aggression than Mad Max. We managed to strategically create an interval between the lead car and ours, allowing us to briefly approach the Type R's performance limit. That gave us a taste of its potential but left us jonesing for more. As we venture out of the pits, the clutch has an appropriate amount of effort, and the engagement is as intuitive as it gets. The shift throws Arna's toggle switch short as a Miata's, but the shifter is equally easy and pleasurable to row up and down through the gears. The ratios are well spaced to keep the power on tap, and in plus or drive mode, the instrument cluster displays an F1 style rev indicator across the top to keep you from bouncing off the limiter. We didn't feel a hint of torque steer under hard acceleration, but there is a quick shimmy under threshold braking before the ABS kicks in. It's a strong enough wiggle to keep you on your toes, but not so much as to feel out of sorts or to get you to dial it back. The rev match downshifts eliminate the finesse of heel towing the pedals since you only need to slam the shifter into gear and dump the clutch. If you're like us and prefer to truly do the work yourself, rev matching can be disabled in the settings menu, and the pedals are placed perfectly for precise footwork. In some of the higher speed bends, there's an initial whisper of understeer, but it's easy to predict and manage with a minuscule lift of the throttle and a nudge of the steering wheel. In slower corners, Trail braking all the way to the apex gets the tail to subtly rotate and you can maintain some oversteer once you get back on the gas, no need for those silly artificial drift modes, and the tires surrender grip progressively rather than in an instant. Just as we were becoming one with the Type R, the radio crackled, instructing us to give it a cool down lap before rolling back to the pits. This brief tease bodes well for the $43,990 Civic Type R's capabilities and we'll have a more complete picture in the coming weeks. In the meantime, we're left with the satisfaction that despite the latest Civic R's tamer styling, performance is edgier, more reactive, and thoroughly enjoyable. With the disappearance of the Subaru WRX STI and the Mitsubishi Evo, we're glad to see Honda bringing back its hottest of hatchbacks for a glorious victory lap. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Honda Civic Type Our First Drive, Return of the King If you ask us, and you did, the last-gen Civic Type R was the undisputed king of sport compact cars. Nothing it competed with drove as well as that car did. That is, understandably, a tough act to follow, but the 2023 Honda Civic Type R has pulled it off. The long, slow drip of information about this car has obviated the need to go deep into technical detail here, so we'll keep it short and sweet. Honda engineers effectively took all the best parts of the old Civic Type R, CTR, improved them by, let's say, 10%, and put them in the new generation Civic body. It wasn't quite as simple as that, but the end result certainly feels like it was. The result is a car that immediately communicates its capabilities to you. You know from the second corner that you can drive this car flat out with no warm-up or familiarization. It's that good. It doesn't even matter how talented a driver you are, because this car can make both an amateur and a pro feel completely confident going all out and finding every last bit of adhesion. Civic Type R, Track Rat. And, boy, does Honda want you to. Clearly the engineers had to find a way to make this car even more awesome than the old one, and they found it on the track. It's exceedingly obvious that all the improvements made to this car were done in the name of chasing tenths and even hundredths of a second in lap times. Circling Northern California's tricky Sonoma Raceway, better known as Sears Point, the magnitude of lateral grip is just staggering. This is at its core, a front-drive compact hatchback sedan, a commuter car. The amount of speed it can carry through corners boggles the mind. 
fitted with its optional Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, the CTR never lets go. The most wiggle you'll get out of it is a tiny little rotation of the rear end on turn end that points you at the apex, or a mild push wide at the exit if you're completely ham-fisted with the throttle. Otherwise, the car just grips and grips and grips. It never breaks loose or snaps. It honestly feels like the only way the Civic Type R can get sideways is if you went off the track. You need a low grip surface to break the stranglehold these tires have on the ground, and even then you get the impression it wouldn't be that dramatic an event. The only time you're confronted with issues of grip is when exiting low speed corners. The limited slip front differential does excellent work putting the power down, but beyond that it's your responsibility to set up for the corner correctly. Get it right and the car pulls away hard, but apex too early and get on the power too soon and it'll gently push wide, which can be easily corrected by backing off the throttle and promising to get it right on the next lap. Street Sports It's not much different on the streets, even with the standard Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires installed. The CTR just makes it easy to drive fast. You get the innate impression you'd have to drive like an absolute tool to wreck this car. Bumps? No problem. Bumps in the middle of a high-speed corner? Also no problem. Small jump that you totally didn't see coming because you were going so fast? Again, zero issues. It just... Grips. Thank goodness, because if it didn't, we'd be writing a much different review. As it is, the tires make up for the CTR's one deficit, overly stiff dampers. Obviously tuned for glass smooth racetracks, in anything but comfort mode they're just too stiff for the street. In full strength plus or mode, the car pogos over bumps like the old Ford Focus RS. There's so much vertical movement taller drivers need to watch their heads. It's the one area where this car went backwards, generation to generation. In the old CTR, you could jump in, push the plus or button, and go. Didn't matter the road or the surface. It was set up perfectly for anything. You can't do that with the new version. You need to go into the infotainment system, find the vehicle settings menu, then the driver assistance menu, then customize the individual drive mode. That way, you can put the engine in plus or mode and the dampers in comfort, and maybe the steering in comfort. Too, since like too many cars it gets needlessly heavy in sportier modes. While you're in there, scroll to the bottom of the driver assistance menu and turn off the automatic rev matching feature for the 6-speed manual transmission. Obnoxiously, before you can do any of that, you not only need to be at a complete stop, but have the parking brake engaged. We'd be able to accept this as a safety precaution if it weren't for the fact that any non-driving related settings can be altered while the vehicle is moving. You can literally reset the infotainment system to the factory defaults while moving, but you can't turn off the rev match feature unless the parking brake is on. It's especially obnoxious because there's an unused button next to the drive mode selector that could have been the rev match on off switch. The system's saving grace is that it'll remember your drive mode and rev match settings on restart. With the exception of plus or mode, the car will restart in the same configuration you had it in when you shut it off so you don't have to change a bunch of settings every time you get in. It's a slight pain in the ass setting it up the first time, but it's so worth it. Properly configured, the new CTR may be stiffer than the old one, but reasonably so. Keeping it copacetic. Otherwise, Honda didn't mess with success. Yes, the engine makes slightly more power than before, 315 horsepower now, an increase of 9, but it's more of an optimized tune than any revolutionary update. Power still builds progressively with revs, the engine feeling stronger and stronger as you climb toward redline. If you experience turbo lag, it's because you're in the wrong gear and you let the revs drop too low. Drive it like you mean it and you'll never be disappointed. Honda engineers correctly ascertained the old CTR didn't need more power to be better, and focused on the power curve instead, because, really, with front-wheel drive, you're just going to be battling torque steer and traction if you simply keep adding power to pump up the spec sheet. 
the CTR would be significantly worse if it were significantly more powerful. Similarly, they didn't waste any time trying to make the shifter any better. When you're neck and neck with Porsche for the best manual shifters on the market, what's there to work on? The new CTR shifter, transmission, and pedal spacing are exactly as perfect as were the old cars. Same for the brakes. Just looking at them, you might wonder if Honda shouldn't have gone a bit bigger and filled out the wheels, but after driving the thing you can only conclude the additional unsprung weight wasn't worth it. The CTR is a light car and can carry so much cornering speed that you don't need a ton of braking power to get it hauled down for slow bends, and the cooling is so good the brakes don't need to be huge to shed enough heat before the next braking zone. There's a lot of that old Lotus philosophy at work here. Make the car lighter and you won't need to overcompensate with power or brakes to deliver magic. And yet it's so much more. Don't let what we've said thus far convince you Honda didn't improve the breed, though. The underlying structure is new and it lends the car a new shape. Popular as the old CTR was, there was often a yes, but appended to opinions, which always centered around the somewhat juvenile styling. Subtle it wasn't. This car, for better or worse, is far more mature and restrained stylistically, so much so that the big rear wing looks almost like a Pet Boys special and not something designed in an OEM wind tunnel. Regardless of what you think of the outside, the inside is a resounding success. The new Civic's interior is a vast improvement on the old models, especially the dashboard. Pairing it with the previous CTR's fantastic seats is a winning combination. Retaining hatchback practicality, though it's more of a four-door coupe now, means there's still a ton of cargo room for everything from luggage to spare wheels and tires when you head off to track events. Like you, we wondered what Honda would do to somehow make the CTR even better. We might have guessed, hoped, even, at thoughtful, incremental improvement, and that's exactly what happened. The new Honda Civic Type R is everything great about the old car turned up a notch plus a new interior, all for just under $45,000. It's the best performance bargain on the market, assuming you can find one without an insane dealer markup, and we couldn't ask for anything more. About Honda Honda offers a full line of clean, safe, fun, and connected vehicles sold through more than 1,000 independent U.S. Honda dealers. Honda has the highest fleet average fuel economy and lowest CO2 emissions of any major full-line automaker in America, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's 2021 Automotive Trends Report. The award-winning Honda lineup includes the Civic and Accord, along with the HRV, CRV, Passport and Pilot Sport Utility Vehicles, the Ridgeline Pickup, and the Odyssey Minivan. Honda's electrified vehicle lineup includes the Accord Hybrid, CRV Hybrid, and in the future, Civic Hybrid. The Prologue SUV, Honda's first volume battery electric vehicle, will join the lineup in 2024. Honda has been producing automobiles in America for 40 years and currently operates 18 major manufacturing facilities in North America. In 2021, more than 95% of all Honda vehicles sold in the U.S. were made in North America, with nearly two-thirds made in America, using domestic and globally sourced parts. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Honda CR-V Hybrid vs. Toyota RAV4 Hybrid Comparison Test Practical Considerations Few things bring people together today like our collective hatred of high gasoline prices. Regardless of who you blame for it, prices are high right now and are coming down quickly. It's enough to drive some folks into an electric car, but for those not yet ready to make the leap, the humble hybrid gets another turn in the spotlight. This time, though, we're not only talking about egg-shaped cars like the Prius and others. Instead, we're looking at heart-of-the-market vehicles like the 2023 Honda CR-V Hybrid and the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Participation trophies? Here at Motor Trend, we don't do ties. We put our noses to the grindstone until one vehicle wins our latest comparison test. Sometimes this makes our lives a lot harder, this is one of those times. 
both the 2023 Honda CR-V Hybrid and 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid are excellent buys, and you'll be happy with either one. They have far more in common than they have differences, and in the end, our decision came down to critical numbers, price and fuel economy. Only one could win, though, so follow along to see how we got there. Different styles, same results. Be it how they look or how they drive, the 2023 Honda CR-V Hybrid and 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid have different styles and different swagger, but the end result is effectively the same. Indeed, they may have been developed by different companies, but they're two sides of the same coin. When we look at these compact SUVs, we see distinct personalities doing the same job. To our eye, the Honda's design language inside and out is a bit more sophisticated and premium, and it drives that way, too. The Toyota looks a bit more rugged and adventure-ready, and that's how it drives. Neither is prettier or better driving than the other. From the driver's seat, the 2023 Honda CR-V Hybrid is a bit quieter inside than the 2023 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, but both are excellent. The Honda handles slightly better, but each is pleasantly sporty for a workaday family SUV. The Honda's drivetrain is quieter than the Toyota's under hard acceleration, but they're both equally smooth and refined. Each likewise has good brake pedal feel that completely masks the transition between regenerative braking and mechanical braking. We do appreciate the Honda's B-Drive mode, which amps up the regenerative braking and comes in handy when going down hills. Offsetting Technical Advantages Unsurprisingly for direct competitors, the Honda CR-V and Toyota RAV4 hybrids offer most of the same tech features. Each, though, has at least one distinct feature, and each does something better than the other. Both, for example, have adaptive cruise control and lane-keeping systems. Honda's is the more sophisticated package, able to hold the vehicle centered in the lane, whereas Toyota's only prevents the SUV from drifting over the lines. Law requires backup cameras these days, but they aren't all created equal. Honda has a simple rearview camera for reversing, and it works well enough. Toyota, meanwhile, offers a 360-degree view by stitching four camera images together, making the vehicle itself invisible on the screen. If you run over something while the Toyota's cameras are on, it's because you aren't paying attention. Each SUV also carries its maker's latest infotainment software, and it's another case of give and take. Toyota's new system looks far more contemporary and is pretty straightforward to use. Honda's offers a lot more customization, but the learning curve is steeper and the look isn't as up to the minute. The CR-V and RAV4 both also come with power tailgates at this price point, but where the Honda requires you to reach for a specific button to close it, the Toyota requires only a gentle tug anywhere on the gate to bring it down. It's a minor convenience, but one we'd like to see on more vehicles. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Honda Pilot trades minivan vibes for a brawnier guys. The 2023 Honda Pilot has been redesigned with a more rugged look, a roomier interior, and increased capability. The Pilot also has a new powertrain, a redesigned 285 horsepower 3.5 liter V6 and a 10 speed automatic transmission. The Trail Sport trim makes the Pilot truly capable off road thanks to all terrain tires, steel skid plates, and a lifted suspension. Ever since the original Honda Pilot debuted back in 2003, it has basically been a minivan dressed up as a three-row mid-sized SUV. However, its shared bloodline with the sliding door-toting Honda Odyssey wasn't outwardly obvious until the outgoing third generation. That's when the Pilot showed its true colors, with a bulbous shape and bland bodywork that deviated from its boxier predecessors. That's also one reason it failed to stand out in a competitive segment full of more interesting alternatives. Well, Honda has flipped the script, with the new fourth-generation 2023 Pilot getting bigger, brawnier, and better at doing off-road stuff. Let's start with the obvious. The 2023 Honda Pilot no longer looks like a lifted minivan. 
Along with being a lot squarer than before, it has an upright front end and front roof pillars that sit farther back, giving it a longer dash-to-axle ratio. The Pilot is also 3.4 inches longer from stem to stern, and its wheelbase stretches by 2.8 inches, too. Its front and rear tracks are also wider, growing by January 2nd and January 5th inches, respectively. Ever been, according to Honda. The company also says its new chassis includes a stiffer suspension, a quicker steering ratio, and other changes intended to make the pilot handle and ride better. A set of larger front brake rotors, 13.8 versus 12.6 inches, and a shorter overall pedal motion are improvements in the braking department. The addition of extra sound deadening materials should also make for a quieter interior. It would have been easy for Honda to take the 280 horsepower SOHC 3.5 liter V6 and 9 speed automatic transmission from the outgoing pilot and plug it into the new one. Instead, the automaker completely redesigned its venerable engine, keeping the same displacement but making myriad improvements. In a nutshell, the new DOHC V6 has better packaging. While the 3.5 liter makes the same 262 pound feet of torque, horsepower rises to 285. A cylinder deactivation system also joins the party in pursuit of better fuel economy. However, Honda hasn't yet announced EPA estimates. All pilots now have a 10 speed automatic transmission, paddle shifters included. The 2023 pilot won't be the first with a Trail Sport badge trim. It'll just be the first one where it actually means something. That's because, unlike the glorified appearance package that came before, the new Trail Sport model is truly capable on most trails, as we learned during a prototype drive. Equipped with all-terrain tires and steel skid plates, the off-road-oriented Pilot can go places its predecessors couldn't. Adding to its capabilities are a 1-inch lift that increases ground clearance and provides better angles front and back for clearing obstacles. The Trail Sports suspension has also been revised to do more than regular models. What if it gets a flat? There's a full-size spare tire. What if it gets stuck? There are sturdy tow hooks built into the front bash plate and one on the standard trailer hitch. To help the Trail Sport avoid getting stuck, Honda fits it with a specially calibrated all-wheel drive system. We won't get too complicated, but when the Trail Drive mode is activated, the setup effectively manages traction to the appropriate wheels. Also useful in this mode is the aptly named Trail Watch Camera System, which provides four different angles otherwise not viewable by the driver. It can be manually turned on or it can display it on its own at speeds below 15 miles per hour. Speaking of low speeds, when combined with sloped surfaces, every 2023 pilot has hill descent control for the first time. An inside job. Sure, a model that can shuttle the whole family into the wilderness is cool, but that's not the pilot's full-time job. It's a people mover. And moving said people is much easier when the space inside is big and comfortable. Well, Honda says the second row has an extra 2.4 inches of legroom and the third row adds a half inch of leg space. For those sitting in the middle row, those seats recline farther. The 2023 Pilot still has room for up to eight people, and the middle seat in the second row is removable. However, instead of having to leave that seat behind, there's now room for it under the rear cargo area. The ladder is also bigger than ever, measuring 22 cubic feet behind the third row and a massive 114 cubes with the second and third rows stowed. Honda improves small item storage, too, with the return of a useful parcel shelf built into the dashboard. No one should have a problem finding a cup holder, either, as the Pilot has up to 14 of them. Overall, the inside of the new Pilot looks ritzier. The materials appear to be more upscale, and the design is undeniably more mature. The standard gauge cluster is part digital, part analog, as seen in other Honda models. Those who opt for the top-of-the-line Elite trim exclusively get a 10.2-inch digital cluster and a head-up display. Apart from the base-level sport, 
which features a 7.0-inch touchscreen. Every pilot has a 9.0-inch touchscreen infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Availability and Pricing Honda hasn't yet told us how much it'll charge for the 2023 Pilot, which will be offered in Sport, EXL, Trail Sport, Touring, and Elite trim levels. The previous generation ended with starting prices between about $39,000 and $53,000, and we expect to see those costs rise by a couple thousand dollars across the board. We'll likely know the exact MSRPs before the new Pilot goes on sale in December. More 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6 specs are out, including big range estimate. Hyundai has released more U.S. details about the 2023 Ioniq 6 electric sedan. The automaker claims a range of 340 miles for the U.S. version, although this isn't yet an official EPA estimate. The Ioniq 6 will go on sale in America in spring 2023, and pricing is not yet announced. Hyundai showed the new 2023 Ioniq 6 at last week's LA Auto Show and announced a few more enticing details about the US version of this electric sedan. The biggest deal is the claimed 340-mile range for the single-motor version, which beats its Ioniq 5 sibling by a considerate amount, that model is rated at up to 303 miles. A 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack is standard on the Ioniq 6, and the version with the longest range is the 225 horsepower single motor rear wheel drive configuration. The optional 320 horsepower dual motor all wheel drive setup drops the estimated range to 310 miles. The Ioniq 6 rides on the same eGMP platform as other Hyundai and Kia EV models but its low 0.22 drag coefficient helps its efficiency and thus its estimated range. Hyundai says it is still waiting for full EPA certification, but these estimates are US specific so the final numbers aren't likely to vary much. We look forward to testing the Ioniq 6 on our 75 mph highway range test to see what it can do in the real world. We don't yet know trim levels or pricing details on the Ioniq 6, as those should come closer to its US on sale date in spring 2023. But Hyundai did release the colors options that will be available. For the exterior, the choices include a matte finish gravity gold, onyx black pearl, serenity white pearl, curated silver metallic, transmission blue pearl, ultimate red metallic, and digital green pearl. For the interior, the three options include black, gray, and a two-tone dark green and gray combo. Welcome to BNC Car Reviews Channel. 2023 Jeep Compass gets a new Turbo 4 with nearly 100 more horsepower. The Jeep Compass will get a new engine for 2023, a turbocharged 2.0-liter inline 4 to replace the old 2.4-liter 4-cylinder. It makes 270 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, a big boost compared with the old engine's 177 horsepower. The 2023 Compass starts at $31,590 for the Sport and ranges up to $40,340 for the high altitude. Jeep is preparing to bump the Compass SUV's power output with a new engine for 2023. According to a document we found on the EPA's website, the 2023 Compass will have the same 270 horsepower turbocharged 2.0 liter inline 4 found in the upcoming 2023 Dodge Hornet. This engine was also slated to be in the Alfa Romeo Tonale, but now that model will reportedly be offered only with a plug in hybrid setup in the US. The 2.0 liters 270 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque are a huge bump over the Compass previous engine a naturally aspirated 2.4-liter inline-4 with 177 horsepower and 172 pound-feet of torque. An 8-speed automatic transmission is standard, and the previous front-wheel drive model has been dropped. Pricing for the 2023 Compass starts at $31,590, which is just $1,210 more than the equivalent 2022 model. Not a bad deal considering the new powertrain.
The off-road oriented Trailhawk model starts at $37,340 and the loaded high altitude is $40,340. Jeep has yet to release official details about the 2023 Compass, so we don't know if there are any other significant changes in store. It did receive a facelift for 2022 that included refreshed styling and a new infotainment screen. We've reached out to Jeep for comment and will update this post as more info becomes available.